Tom Sachs. I'm 45 years old. This is my space program. Our scientists will be analyzing Mars soil samples, determining whether it's safe to inseminate the Mars surface. The same energy and the same skill that NASA, the other NASA, used to get their people to the moon, we are using here. And we're using all the money we can get our hands on. We're using all the hours we can get out of ourselves, all of our brain power, all the research to accomplish this mission. And in that respect, we are going to Mars. There's a real buzz in the studio and everyone's always working on something different and if people are helping each other and there's always people coming in for studio visits and it's just kind of, it's really alive and it's really great. It's the best job we've ever had. Yeah. The space program ended in October with the closure of the shuttle program. It's clear that companies like um, SpaceX, Elon Musk's private um, thing, or Richard Branson, or the Google guys. Everyone's got their own space program now, and that's where the money's at. And I think that um, my space program has as much teeth as theirs do, because mine wins hearts and minds. Three, two, one, main engine start, zero, and lift off of the Atlas V with curiosity. Seeking clues to the planetary puzzle about life on Mars. The Mars uh, Science Laboratory, MSL, Curiosity is landing on Mars on August 4th, is the greatest scientific machine we've ever created. It's a fantastic rover that has a mass spectroscopy machine, laser immolation, great cameras and rover and it runs on like a nuclear powered battery. It's the most miraculous thing but you might not even know about it and your viewers might not know about it because it doesn't have any people on it and as sexual reproducing beings it's important that we that we go to other planets to encourage people. I mean when Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon you Imagine yourself in his shoes. When that robot does laser immolation, it's really hard for you to even imagine what that idea is. I think we have to go to Mars. It's an important place to go. From a scientific perspective, if you, know, if you want to look at the big question, where did we come from? Mars has evidence of um, that there used to be water there. If you took one semester of sedimentology in college, you'll you will believe that water was there if you just study the facts and the pictures and understand how water erodes rock. And why is that important? Well, wherever there's water, there, there was life. This is the only, not even NASA has like a, a completely freestanding limb module like this, aside from the ones that are on the moon. What we've got in here is everything that the two astronauts will need for the full mission, and, and, and then some. Everything from, I mean, we might put a little more emphasis on vibe than the normal space program, because we have the DJ mixer over here um, with the CD player and an iPod dock. We have the tequila, vodka, and whiskey bar, including uh, blood pumps running through our own homemade dispensers. Seven, six, five, Four, three, two, one, lift off. That's like the master. And then you have all of the different cameras that are spaced out. So this is a chronological order of the things that are going to happen. Right? So this is this is where you suit up in the quarantine. This is where the astronauts will suit up. And then uh, eventually we get to the, the launch pad is right there. That's the rockets, et cetera, et cetera. And what this is is basically a timeline of the mission. What I've learned about the space program, partly through our own work, but also through our partnership with the folks at Jet Propulsion Laboratory, with whom we've had a bit of a 
back and forth think tank over the past two years where they fly over to us, drink tequila and talk about art. We fly over to them, drink vodka and talk about science. Uh, is m really that it's just some dudes in a glorified garage. You know, when they come over to our studio and we talk about the, the steering on the Rover, where we took a golf cart, cut it in half, and then a winch and mounted it to the steering so that you could have uh, push button steering in your right hand. You know, we all sat around and just kind of fucked around with ideas with our buddies from JPL. And then we we're like, man, how did you put those airbags on the Pathfinder mission to Mars? And he's like, I don't know, we just tried some stuff just like we're doing now. And once it stopped popping, we thought it might work. So we, we kind of realized there's a greater affinity between the work that we have and their work than we'd ever thought before. This isn't just plywood and some artists like trying to tell you that we're definitely going to Mars on the, par the Park Avenue Armory. Like we're actually dealing with our friends at NASA and Jet Propulsion Laboratory. We're actually figuring out real systems and talking about existing systems. And it's our hope that some of that will stoke a little bit of excitement. If, if one five-year-old comes out of here with an idea that sticks with him for a few years, long enough to you know get him to go and study things a little bit deeper, it's, every little bit of it's worth it, you know. I think what I've learned from NASA is um, stay out of headquarters, don't ask permission from government, do it yourself, because they will only mire you in bureaucracy. They will crush your spirit. You know, don't get a motorcycle license. That's what I learned. Ride safe, but don't get involved in the system. 